Yo, happy Wednesday, hump day, folks. How y'all doing? It's your boy, Mike D, a.k.a. DDE80, a.k.a. 13 Wonder of the World, a.k.a. Mike DZ. So nice for you guys to listen to me on the point of view on this Wednesday. Man, I got a lot to talk about. I'm not going to really get into the wrestling podcast. I should. I might talk a little bit about Raw uh and talk about nxt and uh aw tomorrow but um yeah i'm gonna have me a little fun today on the podcast i got two two podcasts i'm gonna do today uh both of them are gonna pertain in mostly about basketball also the, the second one is gonna be about the my favorite nba champions my greatest nba champions top 20 on the list that's going to also take place as soon as this one this podcast is over with so i probably won't be on here about maybe no more than 20 minutes and then i'm gonna do the other podcast also i'm gonna do this week as wwe gets ready to do their king of the ring and queen of the ring pay-per-view uh, i'm gonna do that one as well and talk about my favorite uh king of the ring winners uh i saw uh a show on Peacock about it, but mine is totally different than what they had on WWE Peacock. Um, shout out to the Point Place family. Shout out to Bobby Reezy. Love you, bro. Shout out to M. Breezy. Shout out to Naya Naya, my sister. I love all y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to the point of view. You can listen on Spotify as well as YouTube, all your streaming platforms. Just trying to make the point of view as a bigger, bigger platform coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't going to be this ticky-tack stuff after a while. It's going to be really caved in, really going to be in, and really down professionally. So I want everybody to know that as well. Um, basically, man, I want to get started on the NBA playoffs. Uh, the Eastern Conference Finals started off last night. Uh, I watched the replay of the game between the Celtics and the Pacers, and the Pacers were getting it in on those Celtics, man. Um, and in the end, the Celtics were able to win. Uh, let me tell y'all this right. Here. Let me tell y'all something. And I don't know who's gonna agree with me or not, but let me say this. I want to say this with nothing but respect to the Indiana Pacers and to the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics, if they don't play up to par like they supposed to, the Indiana Pacers can win this playoff series. And I'm telling you, this will be the first time, if the Pacers win this, then the, this will be the first time the Pacers have been to the NBA Finals since Reggie Miller and Jalen Rose and, and all those boys went up against Kobe and Shaq and the Lakers back in 2000. Excuse me a minute, I'm just giving me a bottle of water. Uh, but yes, and I'm saying this because I want people to understand why I'm saying this. The Pacers came out ready, but the Boston Celtics came out flat. And that's because they had all that time off. That's the reason why they were able to do what they did. But they went, went into overtime, three-point shots by Jalen Brown and by, you know, Jason Tatum. But Drew Holiday was serious last night. You know what I'm saying? Derek White, serious, man. And it's going to take the others to beat the Indiana Pacers. It just ain't going to be Tatum and Brown. It's going to take a Drew Holiday, or Al Harford, or, or, or Derek White, because the Celtics bench sometimes is suspect. And Hallen Burton's going to have a hard time with these guys. I'm, I'm just telling you this. I'm, I'm telling you from what I see, because those boys in Boston, they defend, man. And when they defend, it's hard to not to defend against them. They're not playing against a gimpy New York team. 
They're not playing against Jalen Bronson and Josh Hart and all those boys. Miles Turner's going to have to step up. And I know it's just one game, but him and Siakam, along with Hallen Burton, they're going to have to step up. I was listening to Gil's Arena show. Shout out to Gilbert Arenas and Kenya Martin and uh, Brandon Jennings and all those boys that, that be on, on, the Gil, on the Gilbert Arena show. Which, by the way, man, I'm trying to find that Washington Zero Arenas jersey because I liked it. And I'm trying to see if I can get it. But I heard what they were saying, and they're absolutely right. The Indiana Pacers are going to catch some hell against the Boston Celtics. Those guys are going to have to have a, a perfect situation for them to happen for them to beat them. It's just that plain and simple, man. It's just that plain and simple with this series, I'm telling you. I think the Celtics can win this series in five or six, but I think that the Celtics, and here's the thing, and let me say this here, because this is what happened to them in every series they've had in these playoffs. They come out and they win game one. Guess what happened in game two? They go in game two and they get mollywhopped by the competition. They cannot do that in this series against Indy. Because a lot of people think that Indy is outmatched against them. But those boys can play. Hallen Burton and Siakam and Turner and... Uh, Nee Smith and Nimrod, I don't want to say his name wrong, and T.J. O'Connor, and all those boys can play. Boston has got to get this done this year. You have been to six Eastern Conference championships, and you've only had one, and, and this is in the Tatum-Brown era. You have lost in all of them except for one that's the year that you guys went to the nba championship and lost to the warriors you cannot go through this again this year you have got to get the job done and i know that tatum and brown they can do it but they have got to turn it on in this series they need to make a statement they need to make a statement and let these people know, let Indy know that we're not playing with y'all. We're not going to give y'all what y'all want. We're going to try to knock your heads in. And that's exactly what they need to do in this series against those boys. Just that plain and simple. I think it's going to be either 4-1 or 4-2 because I think Boston ends the series in Indy. They don't go back to the Boston Garden and go in the seven-game series against these guys. They don't need that because if they, if they come out, they've got to worry about a monster in Luka and Kyrie who used to play for them. And you also got a guy in Ant-Man who doesn't care. He's very charismatic. Carl Anthony Towns, Niles Reed, Conley, Conley Jr., Gobera, McDaniels and all those boys, they are ready for the challenge if they get past Dallas. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But as for the Celtics, the Celtics got to win the championship this year. Because if they don't win it, I think it's time to bust it up. You're paying Jalen Brown $300 million. And what results is this? You don't win a championship? Jason Tatum is the franchise of Boston. And you come up short again, you can't keep coming up short like this, man. You got to get it done this year. I think Boston can win the chapter. It's wide open. Because you don't have to worry about Giannis. You ain't got to worry about Embiid. You ain't got to worry about Jalen Bronson. You ain't got to worry about Joker. You ain't even got to worry about LeBron and AD. You ain't even got to worry about Golden State. Win. That's all I'm telling Boston. Win. Win it, man. You know what I'm saying? Just get it done. Uh, also, 
It is Minnesota versus Dallas tonight. I do believe that Dallas can possibly make this series go seven. Because I'm going to tell you why I said, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to tell you, excuse me. Wow, that was good. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying it. And here's why I'm saying it. I think that Minnesota has the opportunity to go to the NBA championship. But because of the experience of Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic in the conference finals, they have a chance to get to the, to the promised land. It's going to be interesting to see how Luka holds one of those boys and how Ant-Man and Kyrie go at each other. It'll be interesting. That's going to be a fun matchup right there to see how that goes. Speaking of OKC, man, the sky's the limit for them. They've got all the draft picks along with the Knicks. They can make their team better within a two-year span. Let, let me say this here. I heard on all television platforms about this, about Kevin Durant could possibly go back to OKC. They say that they don't want to mess it up because of how he is, how he's a guy that don't say too much to anybody. Man, let me let me tell y'all something. And I know I'm not a sport, I'm not a beat writer, I'm not a former NBA player. I've watched basketball all my life. I don't know what's going on in the locker rooms unless somebody tells it. I don't know how players feel when they lose championships or lose a shot at championships or anything like that. I don't know none of that. But I do know the passion. I do know the heart. And I don't care what anybody says. Kevin Durant has heart. Now, I, I didn't root for him when he was playing against my boy in Cleveland when he's with Golden State. No. But I like Kevin Durant's game. And I'm, I'm saying this for a reason. If OKC, and I want people to understand this, and I'm, I'm guaranteeing this, that this would happen if it happened. If Kevin Durant wanted to go back to OKC, you think for one second, guys like Dort, those guys will be gone. They would trade at least five players off the thunder to get Kevin Durant to come back to OKC. And if he goes back there, and this is just me hypothetically talking, but if he goes back to OKC, there is no way in the world that OKC do not get over the hump, get past Dallas, and get to the East, to the Western Conference Finals. With a Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant is like top 10 on the all-time scoring list. Just imagine if he wouldn't have sat out two years. He probably would be, what, four? Three or four right now? He probably would be I and Michael Jordan's record as scoring title record, scoring record on the record books. Because he needs 13,000 points to catch up with LeBron James. But LeBron James is probably going to end up retiring with 43,000 points. Kevin Durant's going to need 15,000 points to catch up with LeBron James to break it. Now, I said this and I'll say it again. I thought that he would be the all-time scorer. He could break Kareem's record. But I forgot about my boy LeBron James. But, I'm, but 
here at Yonder, that's, that's another story. But I'm here to tell you, the Boston, excuse me, not the Boston Celtics, but if Kevin Durant wanted to go back to OKC, he would go. They would trade the books for him. That's just something I heard them talking about. But as far as tonight, in the uh, Minnesota and Dallas, excuse me, I will tell you this. I think tonight Minnesota's going to win. I could be wrong, but I think they're going to win tonight. I think Minnesota's going to win game one, and I think Dallas takes game two. That's just my theory on that because it, game one is a feeling not game. You got to see who does what. It's going to be interesting to see. Also, ladies and gentlemen, switching gears, staying on basketball. The, the WNBA World Champions lost last night. The Aces lost their first victory, lost their first loss to the, was it the, the Mercury? I think it was the Mercury, the Mercury beat them, I think, Diana Tarazi, and then were able to go over them and win the game. Uh, interesting to see what happens, because I think uh, Chinese sister plays for the, uh, the Mercury now. It's going to be interesting to see how they go with that. Uh, tonight, Kaylin Clark plays again tonight, I think. And I think Angel Reese will play tonight. Tonight, I might be wrong about that one. But I know for, for a fact that uh, Kaylin Clark and them, they have the, the late night game. So we'll see what they do tonight as well. Uh, as she goes prepared to play again tonight. With that being said, let me go to wrestling. Gunther beat Jey Uso. Jey Uso passed out. I don't know where you go with Jey Uso now. I think Jey, Jey Uso is just there to be a showcaser. I would love to see him win the money in the bank when they had the tournament. Um... It's going to be Randy Orton against Gunther, I think, for the King of the Ring. Now, a lot of people are saying, why not let Randy Orton win? This would be a big boost for us. This would be a big boost for Randy Orton's career if he was to win the King of the Ring. But I do believe that Gunther will probably beat him because I think they want to put the crown on Gunther and I wanna, they want to make Gunther what it is. Now, what would it benefit Randy Orton? I'll tell you what it would benefit him. A title match against Cody Rhodes at SummerSlam. If Randy Orton was to win the King of the Ring tournament and become the king, you put Randy Orton in that match at SummerSlam against Cody Rhodes. And it looks like Cody Rhodes is about to become the United States champion and hold on to the world, the WWE title he has. But Cody Rhodes is probably going to lose that title at the, at the following pay-per-view because they don't let the wrestlers have, that win double titles, they don't, they don't have them that long. They have them for like until the next pay-per-view and then they take the belts off of them. And if I was them, I would give that belt to L.A. Knight or let Logan Paul win that title back and then have SummerSlam Logan Paul against L.A. Knight for the U.S. title. Simple ABC booking. You don't believe it? That's just what it is. Okay, Live Valkyrie beats Eel Sky to represent the raw side of the Queen of the Ring. I would love to see Bianca against Lyra Valkyrie, but it's not going to happen. I think it's going to be Nia Jax against Lyra Valkyrie, and I think Nia Jax is going to become the Queen of the Ring. I could be wrong, but I doubt it, because I do believe you could go with Queen Bianca. That would be a nice thing for her to do. But I think you go with either Nia Jax or Lyle Valkyrie. And I think Lyle Valkyrie would, would thrive as the queen of the ring. But I think you put that on Nia Jax. And I think that's what WWE is going to do. Because slowly but surely, I think they're trying to build up 
the bloodline to be a, a huge faction. So that's pop. That's possibly what you might see happening. Chad Gable beat Sami Zayn in a one-on-one -on -one match because of Otis. But at the pay-per-view, it's not going to happen. Sami Zayn is still going to be the Intercontinental Champion after the pay-per-view. You already saw Chad Gable talking with the Creed brothers. Nothing's going to happen. Is Chad Gable is going to end up recruiting the, the Creed brothers and Ivy Nile. They're all going to be a different group. So now you have Jade and Bianca going up against Shayna and Zoe for the tag team titles. That's going to be interesting to see what they do in that match as well. Also, ladies and gentlemen, very interesting. Judgment Day loss to the Awesome Truth. Who's next on the, on the radar to go up against the Awesome Truth? We'll find that out soon, too. Hey, I'm just telling you what's happening in the pieces of wrestling. I'm sorry, but this water's good. <laughs> uh, Yeah, man, I mean, I mean, everything is going the way it's supposed to go in the wrestling, man, you know. Everything is, it is what it is. It's going down. Everybody's enjoying themselves, having a, a great, you know, a great time in the, in the, the sports world as well as in life. You know, we all go through hard times. I'm just praying that God help me through my hard time because I'm having a hard time right now. Just actually, I can tell you, praying for me. I'm going to yield and come with part two of the point of view. But this has been part one. Enjoy your Wednesday. God bless you. God keep you. Enjoy the NBA playoffs. Enjoy Major League Baseball. Enjoy the WNBA. Enjoy the hockey finals, playoffs. Enjoy AEW Dynamite. You get all your doses of sports tonight. I'll be right back with part two of the Point of View, the special pod.